I've heard it time and time again with street photography, that the purpose is to pursue photos that can never be captured again. The best way to do this is through capturing heightened moments of change. Abbas was a photographer who traveled the world to capture this type of moment religiously throughout the entirety of his adult life. One of the earliest huge moments of this type was a boxing match that took place in 1974. That match? The Rumble in the Jungle between George Foreman and Muhammad Ali. Not only did it highlight moments of change for the boxing world since it was recalled as being potentially the best boxing match of all time, but it was widely considered one of the most monumental sporting events of the 20th century. Outside of the boxing world, its significance went hand in hand with the shifting tide that swept across Africa during this period as countries moved away from their colonial oppressors into states that were self-governed. This shift is what made the presence of photographers and members of the media at the event so powerful, because in this specific case, they brought publicity to the newly renamed country of Zaire which had been formerly known as the Congo. Mobutu, the dictator of Zaire, considered having members of the international press present to be a symbolically powerful sign for his new nation. While he is said to not have personally attended the match because he was not a fan of the sport of boxing, he did meet with Ali beforehand and Abbas was there to capture the meeting and produce photos that would help in strengthening the legacy of Muhammad Ali, that legendary boxing match, and begin to push his career in broadening the legitimacy of documentary photography in ways that had not been altogether seen up to that point. Abbas would go on to take photos throughout his life that would expand what documentary photography looks and feels like, while creating even broader horizons in terms of physical travel to capture the subjects that were at the center of his frames and in terms of creativity that would convey the emotions of the situations being photographed, while simultaneously conveying the beauty of these wonderfully captured photographic works of art. Abbas captured an ever-expanding list of events that showcased how the world changed throughout the course of his life. In 1971, he took risks to make photos in Biafra that highlighted the horrors surrounding the end of that country. Without a visa or money to travel to Biafra, but feeling compelled to do so, Abbas found luck on his side as he was guided onto a plane full of journalists and photographers headed to the country. Although he was not among the people listed to board that particular flight, he was given a seat and sent off to cover the news coming out of West Africa. In 1972, Abbas found himself on the side of luck once again while taking photos in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. In one instance, after a day where he felt he had failed to take any noteworthy photos, a bomb exploded not far from his location leaving him unscathed, but providing an opportunity to capture an image that beyond being well composed, showed the intensity and emotion that were present during that violent era of Northern Ireland's history. Covering this conflict, Abbas described the peace wall as a symbol of hate that was the byproduct of centuries of mistrust between the Catholic and Protestant communities in Belfast. In 1978, he chose to go back to his motherland of Iran to take photos of the Iranian Revolution. Originally, Abbas supported the revolution, but feeling that it had turned too violent, he insisted on showing it for what it was. When those around him urged Abbas to destroy certain photos he had taken because they felt that it would expose the revolution's dark side, Abbas stated, I am a journalist, which is a historian of the present, so I have to show these pictures now. In addition to these few short examples, his travels enabled him to document conflicts in Vietnam, South Africa, Chile, and Afghanistan, and also allowed him to cover the Israel-Palestine conflict, the Gulf War, and the end of the USSR. His methods of traveling to find and cover breaking events and long-standing conflicts show that conviction, luck, and risk are potentially needed in tandem to get great photos, whether they are by street, documentary, or subject matter that lies somewhere undefined in between. What I'm interested in is not religion as such, but the political, social, and psychological aspects of religion. The horrors people commit in the name of God. This is what I try to photograph. Through his constant travels, Abbas found himself on a journey to reveal the outward appearance of internal experiences of man, both like and unlike himself. His photo books document this journey in Return to Mexico, Journey Beyond the Mask, 
a journey through militant Islam, and Faces of Christianity, a photographic journey. He had planned to continue his work on religion by venturing into animism, the belief that all natural phenomena share a soul and spirit to energize them. But it was cut short by the events of 9-11. That day forced all of what he learned in his previous work on religion to coalesce into a body of work that attempted to look at the disputes between world religions. The book that came out of this is titled, In Whose Name? It took Abbas to 17 countries over the span of seven years to explore the subject matter. He stated that he wanted to use this work to answer the question, what has happened to the minds of Muslims to make 9-11 possible? However, Abbas never revealed his own feelings on the subject, but claimed that he hoped his book would provide enough elements to enable people to draw their own conclusions on the matter. In his reflections on religions as a whole, he suggested that they had become more of a force of political ideology than communities to place one's faith in. Following his long-term project that had focused on the issues between religions, he continued to focus on Buddhism, Hinduism, and Judaism, just as he had done for the other world religions before. Abbas died at the age of 74, after living a life of adventure and chasing photos, in a way that pushed documentary photography to be taken to another level. As a medium that can be seen as holding great artistic value while showcasing historic events, and a medium that can be used to show the way societies look, behave, and interact with one another. It's hard to say whether or not this much dedication is required to make any type of similar impact on the craft of documentary photography. But if that's what you're aiming to do, and you're willing to take leaps of faith as great as those taken by a boss, I have to imagine your impact would be felt as well. Until next time, keep developing.